Okay everyone, today we're going to be testing what happens to a fan in a vacuum chamber. Can it still blow stuff around? So this has been one of my most requested videos and so I haven't done it yet so I decided that to take the request and see what happens to things in a vacuum chamber when there's a fan blowing on them. Okay, so I have my fan hooked up here and I can actually adjust the speed of it. Turn it on here. Turn it down. So first let's just see what this looks like at atmospheric pressure with these styrofoam beads here. These are going to get everywhere. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's turn on our fan. So this is with air. Let's see how this looks. So I'll turn it to three volts. That's the operating voltage of this fan here. So let's just turn it up to three volts. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's like a snow machine. <laughs> so pretty cool. You can see it actually sucking up the beads through the bottom there and then blowing them around. Okay, let's leave it like that and turn on our vacuum and see how it changes as the vacuum increases. Okay, here we go. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, they're already slowing down. They're still flying around in there though. Look how staticky they're actually getting. Oh, there they go. Okay, so now the movement has stopped in there. No beads flying around. Let's turn up the voltage a little bit. See if we spin it a lot faster if we get beads flying around again. Now this isn't a perfect vacuum. There's still tiny amounts of air in here. At least less than 0.01 atmospheres in there. So there's a tiny bit of air. Let's see if I can turn the fan up a lot and get some uh, beads to blow around. And you can already see them swirling around in there. Okay, so you can see that even in my vacuum chamber, if we turn up the fan extremely high, I don't, how many, don't know how many revolutions per minute it was doing, but I overdrove it. It's supposed to be around three volts. I think it got to 17 volts before it finally flew off there. But you can see that if you turn it up really high, you can get enough drag on those balls that it actually lifts it up and makes it spin around. And uh, also, once one of them starts moving, then it's kind of a cascading effect because they bump other ones and it's not just the air moving them, but the fan's actually hitting the balls. So you can see that's the reason why on planets like Mars, you can still have wind happening. If you remember the movie The Martian, you remember that on Mars, there was a windstorm that pretty much blew his ship over. So even though Mars is a vacuum compared to Earth, it actually has a very thin atmosphere. It's around 610 pascals which is actually a little bit higher pressure than I was achieving in my vacuum chamber here. 
So my vacuum was even able to get to a lower pressure than the pressure on Mars, but you could still see that we could form some amount of wind, just because this isn't a perfect vacuum. But the thing with thinner atmospheres, if you want to get something to move or have lift in the thinner atmosphere, it takes a lot higher velocity. That's because the drag coefficient increases by the square of velocity. Now, if you want a lower pressure than what we've achieved here, you need a special vacuum pump called a turbo molecular pump. Now, these pumps only work once you've pumped everything down to an extremely low pressure already, and then you turn on the turbo molecular pump. And basically how this pump works is it literally just knocks atoms below it. What a turbo molecular pump does is it's almost like a jet engine that has stages of these fans turning extremely fast and they're angled so that when they hit an air mo molecule it knocks it down at an angle and then the next blade catches it and knocks it down and knocks it down and pushes it out the other end. With these turbo molecular pumps you can get to around 10 to the negative 9 pascals which is an extremely low pressure. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest videos out. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.